Hey everyone, and welcome to Binary Space, where you are either a JavaScripter or a Java sipper. In this video, I will show you one usage of the this keyword, as well as what is a factory function, and how can we use these things to write less code overall. So stay tuned. All right, so if you check out what I have written here, I am using two different ways to basically create the same sort of object. Up in the top here, I am using the object.create method and passing in null, which if you've seen my previous videos, you know that this creates an empty object. I am then giving that object some keys with primitive values as their values. And then I am also creating a method on the object called celebrate birthday which will take that user's age, right? Here we are using user one. So user one's age and it will increment it by one. So whenever we call this method, it will increment that user's age. Now I'm doing pretty much the exact same thing down here. We know that from the previous videos, this curly brace syntax is basically just a shorthand version of doing the same thing that we did up here. It's gonna create an empty object. We are then placing some properties on it. Here you can see I have created a method on it called celebrate birthday which does the same exact thing as the other one, right? It's referring to that user, user two, and it is increasing the age by one when we call it. So what if I wanted to keep creating more and more objects like this? Now, there's this concept in programming called the dry principle, D-R-Y, don't repeat yourself. So if I were to keep creating objects like this, I would be repeating a lot of code. So how can we create a process that will systematically create these objects and make it such that we don't necessarily need to keep writing the same code over and over again. We can use a function to generate objects. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I have this function user creator. It takes in a name and an age that we can pass in and it will create a new object. It will give it a name and age and it will return that created object. The question becomes, if I want to create that celebrate birthday method on the objects that I'm generating inside of this function, how do I do that? Because earlier, the way that I was doing that is I was referring to the object itself by name and grabbing its age property and incrementing that. Here, I wanna be able to do the same thing, but I want to do it in a way that makes it dynamic and makes it reusable. So regardless of the, the name that I'm giving the generated object, I want it to be able to work. So what I can do is I can say new user celebrate birthday and that is going to be a function which will increment that object's age but how do I make it reusable I'm going to use the this keyword and I'll explain what this does in just a second so this is kind of one of the two ways that you will see the this keyword used so when we use the this keyword inside of a method on an object what this will refer to is the context of the object that we call this method on. Let me tell you what I mean by that. At some later point, if I want to, let's say I wanna take my user three, that's gonna be our Paul object. So if I want to increment user three's birthday by calling this celebrate birthday function, remember that I said the this keyword will refer to the context that this method is being called on. Where is this method being called on here? It's being called on user three. In other words, it's whatever is left of the dot. So keep that in the back of your mind. Whenever you see the this keyword used in a method on an object, this will refer to the object that we're calling that method on. Now, why did we have to use this here? What if I had you know, what if I did user three dot H? Well, inside of the context of this function, user three doesn't exist, so that's undefined. Same thing for user four. What if I had done new user? So this object that I'm creating and then returning out. It's tempting to think that this might be a way to, to accomplish the same task. And while technically, this actually would work because of a concept called closures, which I'm not really gonna get into in this video. It would be kind of an anti pattern to do it this way because it's not necessarily intuitive. If we were to actually look at 
the function definition of what celebrate birthday is, at that point, it'll be outside of the context of this function user creator, which means that at that point, new user will no longer exist, right? New user is scoped to this function context. Let me show you what I mean in the Chrome DevTools. I'm gonna take this entire code example and I am just going to go into my DevTools here and paste it in and you can see now I will have incremented user three's birthday. But I was using new user inside of that method. So I wanna look at I wanna look at user three and I wanna see I wanna see this function definition celebrate birthday that's saved inside of this object user three. And I wanna see what that celebrate birthday function actually does. I am going to say user three celebrate birthday and I want to view the function definition without actually calling the function so no parentheses here so let's see so what it will do is it will call new user dot age increment age but here outside of the context of user creator for the purposes of this demonstration new user no longer exists and this is kind of one of the reasons why the this keyword was introduced into the language because if we use this here in place, in place of that user, this is basically telling the program and telling the developer writing and reading the program. This is a dedicated variable that is meant to be reused and will point to whatever object this method is being called on. So it's kind of a nifty way to, to signify this is intended to be used in this reusable way. And so when we create a function like this that generates objects and returns them, that is called a factory function. I hope you have found this helpful and useful. If you have any clarifying questions, please leave a comment below. I'll get to it as soon as I can. And stay tuned for more videos like this. Thanks for checking it out. I'll see you all later.